today we are going to discuss some of the important steps in urine formation. As we have started discussing the urine formation process and we have discussed urine excretion rate in our last lecture. So today we are going to discuss it in a little more detail. So basically the first step in the urine formation is filtration of blood. After that there is a reabsorption of some substances and then there is secretion of some substances. All these processes are occurring in the nephrons and each and every step is basically important in urine excretion rate. As we have discussed previously again and again that the kidney is basically having thousands of nephrons compacted together in pyramids known as the renal pyramids which are present in the medulla. And these pyramids are made of thousands of nephrons and they are basically making or uh, executing the urine formation process. They form urine and the urine is excreted at the renal papilla into the minor calyces which goes into the major calyces then the renal pelvis and then into the ureter. And deep inside the nephrons what happens is that every nephron every nephron is basically filtering the blood. So the filtration is such that a blood known as uh, a blood vessel, a ferrant arteriole basically, comes and it forms the uh, glomerulus which is basically a capillary structure and filtration of blood occur in the glomerulus and the filtrate then moves in the renal tubule. Now we have discussed in detail in our previous lectures the structure of the nephrons and the renal uh, tubules. Now once the filtrate start moving, there is some there are some changes that occur in this uh, in the composition of the filtrate now we are going to discuss those changes now de uh, depending upon the filtration the, the three main important steps the filtration reabsorption and secretion it will determine the urine excretion rate so basically we previously uh, discussed the equation used for determining the urine excretion rate which uh, basically uh, says that urine excretion rate is equal to filtration rate minus reabsorption rate plus secretion rate. Now, the blood is containing a lot of substances which are filtered here except proteins. So except proteins, all substances are filtered here and some of the substances are reabsorbed and some are secreted. So depending upon the filtration, reabsorption and secretion, each and every, each and every component has its own excretion rate. Now, if a substance is filtered here, now this is basically the simplified version of this diagram. Here we have com di uh, completely drawn this diagram and it is basically the simplified version. If the blood is filtered and a substance is filtered here and it, it basically enters the Bowman's capsule and the tubules of the nephron and it is not reabsorbed, then its urine excretion rate will be equal to its filtration rate. Suppose for example, 10 ml, 10 ml of a substance is filtered here and 10 ml is excreted. So it's urine excretion rate will be equal to its filtration rate. If it is not reabsorbed and it is, uh, if some component is not secreted. So any substance which is not reabsorbed into the blood and which is, which is not secreted into the tubule, its urine excretion rate will be equal to its filtration rate. So if 10 ml is filtered, 10 ml will be excreted. Now suppose for example, if there is partial reabsorption, the blood is coming here and it is filtered here. Suppose for example, blood is coming here and is filtered here and some something some substances are basically filtered here but they are partially reabsorbed into these blood vessels from the tubules from the tubules they go back into the peri uh, tubular capillaries so if some substances are reabsorbed partially for example if they are partially reabsorbed a small component of that substance is reabsorbed into the blood it is filtered here and then it is partially reabsorbed then its urine excretion rate will be equal to filtration minus reabsorption for example if 10 ml if 10 ml of a substance is filtered but 2 ml is 2 ml is reabsorbed again so its urine excretion rate will be equal to 10 minus 2 it will be 8 ml now if a substance is filtered here and it is completely reabsorbed it is completely reabsorbed its excretion rate will be almost zero and the equation used will be the same urine excretion rate will be filtration minus reabsorption but if any substance is filtered here and the filtrate is about 10 ml but out of 10 ml, 10 ml is reabsorbed here. So 10 ml filtration minus 10 ml is zero. So the excretion will be zero because in complete reabsorption, whatever amount of that substance, for example, glucose or any electrolyte, sodium, potassium, whatever, just for example, if any substance is filtered at the nephron level, but it is completely reabsorbed, then again, its urine excretion rate will be determined by filtration minus reabsorption. So as the whole of the substance is reabsorbed, so its urine excretion rate will be almost zero because whatever was filtered is reabsorbed. So there is nothing left for excretion. Now, some of the components of blood, some of the components of blood, especially hydrogen ion, they are not only filtered, but they are also secreted. They are also secreted. 
so they are filtered at the glomerulus but some part of that substance is secreted from the blood vessel into the tubule as well so the filtration is occurring at the Bowman's capsule but the secretion is occurring at the level of renal tubules so for such substances the urine excretion rate will be filtration plus secretion so if 10 ml or substance is filtered here and 5 ml is secreted so its urine excretion rate will be filtration plus secretion it will be around 15 ml now to summarize this process the urine the urine formation basically occurs the urine formation occurs is a combination of filtration reabsorption and secretion processes and if we look at the nephron we see that every nep nephron has a Bowman's capsule which contains the glomerulus and glomerulus is basically a bunch of capillaries the afferent arterial brings the blood into the glomerulus and due to pressure the blood is basically filtered and the fluid comes out into the Bowman's capsule and then it starts moving in the tubule now depending upon the type of substance for example it may be amino acids or it may be glucose or it may be some sodium potassium electrolyte etc etc depending upon the, the type of substance some of the substance may be completely reabsorbed into the peritubular capillaries or it may not be reabsorbed or it may be secreted from the peritubular capillary into the tubule so these processes are known as the filtration process the filtration occurs at the Bowman's capsule it may the reabsorption process in which the substance moves from the tubule into the peritubular capillaries and this reabsorption may be partial or it may be complete in partial reabsorption a part of the filtrate moves into the peritubular capillaries while in complete reabsorption the whole of the filtrate moves into the peritubular capillaries while in secretion the the substance is not only filtered at the Bowman's capsule but it also gets secreted from the peritubular capillaries into the tubule so these steps basically determine the urine excretion rate of any substance and there are a lot of substances in which uh, these uh, steps are involved and they basically determine their urine excretion rate in our next lecture we will discuss in detail the different types of substances which are either only filtrated or they are filtrated and then partially reabsorbed or completely reabsorbed or they are filtrated and secreted as well so that's all about the filtration reabsorption and secretion processes involved in the urine formation and the urine excretion rate of different substances thanks a lot for watching the video